my therapist likes to call ADHD like a dysregulation disorder. Um, so it's about like just being unable to having difficulty regulating a lot of aspects of your life, like men mentally. So um, poor impulse control, um, um, inability to regulate um, emotions, um, difficulty regulating your attention span. So it is, like I said, part of it's like has to do with attention, but it's only part of it. There's so many other kind of like concomitant like behaviors um, that that come with ADHD. So what it is really is just it, it's a uh, it's um it affects the executive functioning of your brain, which is in your frontal cortex, and um, that part of your brain um, helps with systematic and logical thinking, ordering, structuring, um, and um, and also like regulating attention. Um, and then it also like affects the basal ganglia, which is for mood regulation. So, um, and then the other crucial aspect is that like the dopamine receptors um, have problems um, taking in dopamine whenever it's, whenever the, 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 it's released by the brain. So because of that, like that, that affects a whole host of, 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 of behaviors, obviously, including attention. So, um, so you have to like get more dopamine in order for you to like feel like doing something. Um, so like where normally, like when you do something and like, let's say you accomplish a task, um, and you get a release of dopamine that for most people, like is enough to kind of encourage them to continue doing that task. Um, but with people with ADHD, if that is not the case, um, because like there, there's an issue with like absorbing that dopamine into the receptors. So like you need a, a lot more of it in order to be motivated to do something. So like that plays like into a whole host of stereotypes about people who have ADHD that are, they're lazy, they don't care. Um, they, you know, they, they just kind of sit around and do nothing. Um, but it's really like almost an inability to like will yourself to do something, even though you try really hard. So, um, you know, we can, get into other things later. I don't want to take up the entire time talking, but, um, but, but I just want to put that out there that it's just more than it's so much more than attention. Um, and the other thing too, is that like, um, although I think there is a correlation, you'll probably find a higher amount of, of SPs and NPs with ADHD, but it's by no means exclusive to those types. Any type can have ADHD. Um, from my understanding with mental, uh, health disorders that I've read um, about like people who are knowledgeable about this stuff, um, like Asura Psych, he had a, a YouTube video on this. Like what, what those kinds of disorders do is they like amplify um, or exaggerate certain cognitive functions, um, but it is not like causal, right? So like you being an INFP or an ESFP does not cause you to be, um, to, or cause you to have ADHD. So any type can have it. So I just want to put that out there and I'm done. <laughs> yeah, so any type can have ADHD. I've met all types that have ADHD. I do find that it's more likely for an MP or an SP to maybe consider maybe having it because one of the symptoms of ADHD is distractibility. And I think a majority of perceivers can relate to that one quality of the distractibility, but mm -hmm. that's not enough to qualify to, to have ADHD. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. So definitely any type can have ADHD. There tends to be a trend with more people who come on my show that are NPs or SPs saying that they do, but it's not yeah. exclusive. Any, any yeah. type can have ADHD. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And Leon, would you like to tell us a bit about your journey? That's really hard to follow up. That's really good. <laughs> I'm going to pass that. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, just kidding. Uh, so, like my my history. So, um, how has he have affected me before? Was like back in um, high school. Actually, before I went into high school, my pattern was that I would spend five minutes doing this and five minutes doing that and five minutes doing nothing. Like I, I kind of like have a muse to follow. So I think a lot of people who are creative, they have like a muse and the muse takes them into different directions. And then mm -hmm. they have, they might have a certain kind of rhythm. So people uh, live life with different rhythms. So there's that term neurodiversity, everyone's yes. brains are wired different ways. So like, um, um, and I think I was just really fine with the way I was wired. And then in high school, 
because of the structure and, and the expectations, I felt like I had to put myself away. So I had to put my whole way, just my whole being aside just to do what they want me to do, right? They, they, they mm -hmm. make it seem like <laughs> they kind of exaggerated how, um, how much high school is going to influence your life. They say like, oh, if you don't get good grades, then, you know, <laughs> it's going to be like you're, you're dead or you're like, you, 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 there's no way. You're a loser. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was like, I, I, was, I was really scared. So I was like, wow, I have to really just get this in order. And I remember sitting down and like trying to like fo focus that day doing the stuff they tell you to do in high school. And it was like so hard. And then, and then the thing is, I lost a lot of myself because I haven't recovered all that creativity until mm. recently. So recently, it's like it's like kind of been a process of rediscovering myself. I had to like kind of um, peel away all the like um, everything that they put upon me, right? In terms of what I, I should be doing, and then now I'm more aligned with myself. I'm like fine. I kind of follow my own muse and. Uh, so just to let you know, um, I've done a master's in, uh, I did research in creativity psychology and mm -hmm. I did, a, I wrote a paper on ADHD. So like, and I did interview people like different personality types they have uh, who, who have ADHD and see how it's expressed in different kinds of ways. So it's really fascinating. Uh, what I learned a lot was that my, um, my professor at the time, uh, my advisor, who I really love, and she's a she's an ENTP. She said that if people are being tested for ADHD, it's good to also test for creativity as well, because there's a lot of mm -hmm. corresponding traits. Not necessarily that they necessarily 100% go together, but there's a lot of similarity in in presentation, and I think it's good to recognize that. And I, I do believe people are wired uh, different ways for different reasons. So that, that's my take. There is a correlation between creativity and ADHD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet that correlation also exists with any and creativity too. Yeah. 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 I mean, like if I um if I think of like a lot of the people who are typed as creatives, I I bet many of them had ADHD, whether you know it's like Van Gogh or Shakespeare, or, you know, some of these people like the, the, it just your brain being wired differently can be a disadvantage, but like, especially in the creativity realm, it could be a real, real advantage in that way, because if like, you're not, you know, you're just really thinking differently, you know, um, you kind of have to out of necessity because you're wired that way. But also like, I think it forces you to like figure out ways around, you know, to navigate a society that is not made for people who are neurodiverse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like, even those who technically don't have ADHD, not diagnosed, but are extremely creative and extremely sort of their brain is always popping out ideas. They, it can probably look as if it's ADHD. And so people may say, oh, they have ADHD when that's not like what you said, it's not exactly what it is. And so right. people who are incredibly creative, who are always generating ideas, it can appear that they might have ADHD, but they don't, they're just creative. So there's like this, there's like this, this blending of the two where people may assume things, but still they, they, they don't work, they don't work well together, <laughs> like <laughs> creative and having ADHD, but they're both separate technically. <laughs> right, right. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio type thing. Yeah. So it's so all like, um, anyway, back at, back in those days when I was doing some of that research, well, uh, I, I looked at some of the papers and back then they said that, well, Creativity does not uh, correspond with ADHD, but those are some of the earlier papers. But actually, when you look at certain subtypes, um, subtypes of creativity, there's a correspondence with ADHD, and a lot of it has to do with like uh, generating ideas. So, mm -hmm. like when it comes to generating ideas, the problem is the execution of it, right? Yeah. So, so people like like especially in Western society, they really emphasize that you've created a product, that you've made something. Um, complete. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people who are ADHD and they have creative traits, they don't see themselves as creative. They just see themselves as defective, right? So you look at mm -hmm. like how psychology has defined ADHD. If you look at the, their manual, it's all traits of deficiency. Right? You're, mm -hmm. you're, you have all these traits of deficiency. So, um, so yes, it's really just 
um, difficulty with the the execution kind of part. And then uh, I think when we have that more well well rounded view, that actually does increase the possibility of generating ideas. And I think it's healthy for people's like self concept. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wonder if extroverted intuition users like other people might label them as ADHD when they're not just because yeah. they generate a lot of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, um, always like, they're always sort of, I guess in a way distracted because they're always thinking about the next thing that could happen or like the next possibility. And so in a conversation, um, there may be one topic, but any &E comes in and sort of brings in another topic that is seemingly unrelated, but makes sense to you. And that can right. definitely look like ADHD because it's like to everyone else, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <Where did laughs> that and that was literally my whole life as a child. 